Yeah, let's check out this board that came from another technician. Uh, the board is not powering on. Let's go directly under the microscope. Yeah, so you check under the check my power supply. It's taking three amperes. Yeah, the board has a short circuit. And so I've tried to check what could be causing that problem. And I've arrived to this cup here, PC44. Yeah, this is the one that is taking on the, on that amperage. And I remember, people, remember, guys, this uh, this is one of the most common fault on many motherboards. When your motherboard is shorted, ceramic capacitors are the number one cause for that short. Most of my repairs, if you check all my videos, you'll find that most of the short circuit I've repaired, the biggest percentage is ceramic capacitors. See how they is melting the flux? You check uh, on my power supply, is taking 3 amperes. It's taking complete 3 amperes. That means if I put 4 amperes, it will, stick, it will still take 4 amperes or 3.5 or 3 and something on top. On my multimeter, you can check, it's a beep on both sides. It's beeping. And you can check also, that's a short. Yeah, this is what you'll find on most shorted motherboards. And guys, I'll advise you before you take your motherboard or before you throw away your motherboard, try to check out for this ceramic capacitor because this is the most, most common fault, the most, most common reason as to why your motherboard is shorted. I've seen this through experience. So take note of this. We take out this capacitor here. It's a ceramic capacitor. Yeah, we have various types of capacitor. We have the ceramic, we have the electrolytic, we have the 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 smd there are various components of capacitors we'll check that uh, later we'll have yeah, one day i'll make a video about the different components on a motherboard but let's work on this first you can see the multimeter check my meter yeah that's a short that's a shorted capacitor so we we'll get rid of that cup and uh, maybe we come on Check on my multimeter. Now the shot is gone. We are not having a beep on both sides. And now you have to replace that with another one. So let me get a cup. Yeah, so the cup is here. Uh, oh, the cup is running away. Yeah, guys, so these are some of the tips on how you can troubleshoot a uh, motherboard that is shorted. Yeah, the other components that will make uh, will bring a shot, but I'm um, just pointing out these are the most common. The ceramic capacitor are the most responsible for the for the short most of the short circuits on many motherboards. Yeah, so let's uh, let's clean here and replace that cup with another one. Yeah, so let's come with some more flux here. <coughs> Yeah, the technician sometimes will bring a motherboard that is not having the whole, they are the all other parts of a computer. And as a technician, as a professional, you should know how you can handle that motherboard and be able to deliver so that he can just take the, the motherboard and fits into his laptop and it's all working. And sometimes this is done to, to avoid some, some breaches when it comes to your giving somebody the data like the SSD or the hard disk, that is the data, the data for the client. So the, the, the shop will prefer to remain with the data to make sure nothing happens to the data and bring the motherboard alone, like in this case here. So I also don't like to have the data for the client. Sometimes even when the client brings the laptop to my shop, I tell them to take the SSD with them or hard disk or whatever it's carrying their data because i don't like to handle data issues if something happens and that data is not found remember you can never replace somebody's sales data see the shot is gone uh, look at my multimeter the shot is gone now yeah and i think the motherboard is fine so now we are going to adjust the power supply back to the 19 volts and then plug in a charger So I'm plugging in a charger, but I can see my 
my power supply is reading 2.5 which is not good let me do some readjustment there to 19.5 volts Okay, put in a charger and it's taking now there's no short circuit you can see now the voltage drop is not happening the 19 volts is stable before we were having a voltage drop from 19 to some very little voltage but now it's a stable voltage with some amperage of 9 milliamps so look at this light here the led light is on yeah and this is a good sign that this motherboard is back to life so now let's try to to light it on seems that it's not coming on automatically we have to do something for it to power on yeah so let's put in the charger you can see the first light is on this one now I'll, i'm going to short the power button using a tweezer and you'll see now the second light will be on check the second light is on and now a fan spin let's wait for a fan spin the fan is spinning yeah and so that's it let me use a desktop keyboard to see whether i'm be having a blink on the caps and the num lock to know that the motherboard is having a display so let me put on a charger and let me short the power button with a tweezer yeah huh. so remember guys i'm trying as much as possible to go directly to the point because uh, i no longer want to make very long videos Yes, several of you have complained about long videos let me short the power button yeah the second light is on you can see the second led and the fan is spinning yeah and that motherboard is okay i can see a blink on my keyboard or my desktop keyboard so we're just going to deliver this we're just going to give out this motherboard to the technician he just go and fix it back to the to the laptop and that is it guy no yeah uh, i'm still having a challenge with the camera remember the cameras are very expensive guys but i'm still working on it so that we can we can see more view and more features as i'm talking to you guys so like share subscribe support our channel guys remember when you subscribe you are supporting my work and i would really appreciate that uh, thank you thank you thank you